Hi, uh, good morning, uh, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, today I'm going to share some uh, stories on how the data analytics apply to the biopharma. And uh, you may think uh, data analytics is something like uh, statistics, but uh, how and where biopharma meet data analytics. And you may uh, curious the how data analytics bring value to the pharmaceutical process development and the manufacturing. So uh, today I'm going to talk about the data analytics and what kind of data analytics I'm going to talk about and uh, what the value proposition of data analytics and the, in the farmer process development and the manufacturing. And I know uh, you are domain expert in biopharma industry so, because uh, here I uh, uh, collect a number of case studies from the upstream and the downstream and from the development, the manufacturing activity. But I would like to uh, know and what are you interested in so that I can focus on the case studies in more detail and I could uh, also overlook uh, some case studies if you're not interested. So first of all, let me have an interaction with you. Could you let me know and which area you are working in? So there are many, uh, you know, classification, on the biopharma activities and some people classify as uh, upstream and downstream and fill and finish and some people classify as uh, you know the product development process development or production and of course the qa qc also important automation it also important and some people may work in you know the technical transfer manufacturing science and so on and so forth. Okay, so I can see 27% from uh, process and uh, manufacturing, a little bit small, something like eight and technical transfer, MSET, CMC about 20% and QAQC, automation, IT, all the others about 46%. Okay, great. Thank you very much for the interaction. Okay, uh, let's look at what I'm going to talk about today. And of course, the main topic is about data analytics. And uh, we may want to know uh, what's the value proposition of the data analytics. And in the bio biopharma industry and uh, type of challenges we are facing at the moment yeah and then we will talk about the uh, kind of data and analytics we are going to use and how data analytics bring value for us in facing uh, such kind of challenges and then give you some uh, case studies and i divided into a uh, case study from process development and also commercial manufacturing and then we summarize. Okay, so now look at the challenges we are facing in the biopharma. Uh, we may work in the different uh, area, different department that we in the different activities, but there's common challenges, which are time. We want to uh, reduce the process development time if, if you are working in the process development. And we also want to uh, reduce, you know, uh, the diagnosis time if you are working in the manufacturing. And also we want to reduce the uh, product release time. So the time definitely is one of the challenges. And also we all also want to uh, minimize the cost, such as we want to minimize the cost of the uh, experiment, meaning Maximize the materials lifetime and also reduce cost of, uh, you know, the main, any risk incurring 
the product loss, so and so forth. But the most important, the challenge we are facing is we want to have a product quality guarantee to safeguard the product, uh, product quality. And of course, we also want to follow the regulator's guideline, like PAT or UBKD and so on and so forth. So these three, we think the most important challenges we are facing, no matter what we do in the biopharma industry. And I know you are the domain expert in this area, but uh, how about data analytics can bring the value? And for us to save the time, save the cost, reduce the time and uh, guarantee the quality. Okay, now look at what is the data analytics? And we know the data, data everywhere, you know, from our development, manufacturing, analytical, and quality insurance, all the data over there. But uh, what about analytics? Analytics is something like, you know, analyzing the data and provide us the useful information. Okay. And also, there are many uh, methodologies in analyzing this data, but uh, if the information they provided is useful to us, if this information can enhance our process understanding and particularly bring the business value to us. So for the data analytics world, usually we have uh, four different types of analytics. So the number one is descriptive analysis. And this type of analytics help us to answer the question like, uh, what did happen before? Okay. And another type is the diagnosis. And this type of analytics help us to answer the question, why did it happen? So given the data, we want to know what type of information and particularly the hidden information, which is not that easy to be found so that we can, you know, some patterns or some, some trend. And this kind of information can help us to have a better understanding. And we also want to know why did it happen? So this is related to, you know, this type called the diagnosis analysis. And with this understanding, we also expect more. And we, we want to know what will happen in the future. So this is uh, related to the predictive analysis. So the last one, we call it prescriptive analysis. And this type of analysis help us to answer the question like, how can we make it happen? How can we make our product satisfy the certification, for example? Or how can we avoid something bad happen? You can see uh, with the different type of analysis, the business value will be different. Of, and of course, prescriptive analysis bring us the more value, but out the descriptive or diagnosis or predictive analysis that we usually couldn't reach the, the final goal. So they Analytics is something like analyzing the data provides us the information, and this information will help us to have a better understanding for what we are doing at the moment. If you are working process development, and of course you have a bi biology background or pharmaceutical background, but uh, there are always something is not that easy for you to understand. So if such the case, if you use the data analytics, it can provide us useful information so that I can have a better ending. So we gain the knowledge and, and we can make the right decision. And decision, of course, is related to our business goal. So this is about, you know, the data. Analytics. It is something like, you know, uh, statistically in nature, but uh, it can be used actually anyway, and particularly in our biopharma industry. Okay, so what, what kind of data analytics we are going to use? 
And we know there are many types of data analytics. And for the different challenges question, we may use the different methodology in data analytics. But here, I'm going to focus on the three types of data analytics. And they are design of experiment, DOE, multivariate data analysis, MVDA, and the real-time MVDA. And why we focus on this kind of data analytics here, because they are a proven technology and they are also uh, supported or suggested by the regulators, such as, you know, the EMA or FDA and over here. And also in the biopharma industry, this type of uh, data analytics and gradually become a de facto standard. Yeah. Okay, so we will focus on these three types of data analytics. And now we'll have an uh, overview and where this type of data analytics can be applied in our biopharma process development and the manufacturing. So from this, trend, uh, this slide, you can see that DOE is mainly used in the development and no matter upstream or downstream development. Yeah. And this type of data analytics help us to generate the data. Because usually the data analytics is a passive analysis of a given data, but that given data not be informative enough. So we need to consider how to generate useful data. Okay. And at the same time, I we also want to you know, minimize the number of runs over here. And MVDA actually be used from the development until the manufacturing. If you have the data, whether in which activity, and you can use that one. Yeah. And DOE and MVDA is mainly offline fashion of data analytics. But if you are working in the manufacturing, and we need to monitor our process in the, in the real time. So if in such case, the real time MVDA is the most useful. And of course, on top of that, and you may consider not only monitor your process, but you also want to optimize your process in the real time or make adjustment or control so that you can steering in the, your process in such way and at the end of the operation and you can have an on-spec product. And also, uh, if you have, uh, you know, the large manufacturing line and you may have the plants at the different sites and for the people in the high level, C level, they want to have overview of the manufacturing uh, performance and so that the MVDA in the real-time performance fashion is also useful. So this is what I'm going to introduce you of the data analytics, analytics and then I will share you uh, some case studies at, at the different, uh, you know, the activities over there. Okay, so we come back to the DOE and what does the DOE mean here? The DOE actually is a design of instrument in short, uh, is a systematic approach to understand the causality and particularly is the use for, for the design space because for most of the farmer, biopharma industries, if they want to get their product or process approved by the regulator, authority and they need to uh, clearly and the present how their design space is derived over there. So, so the DOE can help us to generate the data and at the same time with the minimum number of runs. So by doing this, and you can see the DOE can save the time and save our cost. And also we are going to de uh, derive the design space. And of course, and we have to satisfy the quality requirement. So this is what the DOE is about. It's particularly useful when you do the experiment, exploring 
in your uh, development phase over here. And here I just use, uh, you know, the real world example. If we are considering baking a cake, and of course, and we are more interested in the, the taste of the cake. And we also know the ingredients ingredients of the cake and uh, you know the baking condition are also important so the doe they use the jargon like the response which is the things we are interested in at the end and also the factors which exert impact to the response over there and of course for each factor and we may consider the different uh, the values and we are looking for the right combination of the values for all the all these factors in such way and we can have uh, you know the tasty cake over there so this idea actually it can be applied to our biopharma industry no matter you're working in cell line development or filtration development another type of data analytics is uh, multivariate data analysis, MVDA. And this is particularly useful when we given a large number of data and we try to find the useful information because the conversional methodology analyzing the data and they just use the univariate approach. But you know, the real world is multivariate and we want to have the overview and we want to have the pattern and such that and we can have a pattern standing from this data. So multivariate and you can consider is when we have a large number of variables or process parameters and we want to summarize this information such that and we can have the overview of the uh, the uh, process over there. And this is uh, the real time example for multivariate data uh, data and analysts. And uh, this is uh, American Dow Jones index. I think I think most of you are familiar with this and you can see the horizontal axis is the time and uh, the line is the Dow Jones index. And if we look at this trend chart and we know uh, it's up and down, and, and actually this Dow Jones index is reflection of American economy. But the um, American economy is not just based on a specific company, it's many, many companies. So it's here, the Dow Jones is something like, uh, you know, the summarize the performance of all the companies in the stock exchange X market. So if we have this kind of trend chart and we can have the overview, we can have the summarize information and the, what the economy, American economy is evolving with the time. So if we are familiar with this type of trend chart, and I think you maybe understand this kind of a trend chart. See, for example, if we have a bioreactor and we have a bioreaction over there, and of course we measure a number of process parameters like temperature, speed, or pH, and so on and so forth. And each individual process parameters is just to provide us the information from a specific point of view. We want to see if my by uh, the cell culture process is evolving normally, and of course we need the summarization for all the process parameters together. So just mimic the Dow Jones index, and we can summarize all the process process information, and we present. Uh, relatively simple trend chart. So by looking at this and we know if my process is running well or if there's something wrong happen over there. Okay, so this is the basic idea of multivariate data analysis. And of course, this type of thing is we analyze, you know, given the process data and we can 
use multivariate approach and to add some hidden information there. But sometimes if we want to apply this methodology in our production, and of course we have to implement it in the real time. So by implementing in the real time, and we know how my process is, is evolving. If there's anything wrong, there's some fault uh, conditions, faulty conditions, and we can easily detect it. And this detection is much faster and earlier than the individual de detection method. So this is, uh, you know, uh, application and the usefulness of real-time multivariate approach. And here I give you a real world example. Say for example, if you want to drive from home to your destination, and if we have some kind of, uh, you know, mechanism like GPS, and we know where we are and every, sampling time or every time and we can predict what I will go and we can also monitor the traffic conditions if there is you know the traffic jam and probably and we can give you the indication you can reroute to other road and such that and you can reach your destination without a delay. So if we convert this to our manufacturing and in the middle of our operation, if we find something wrong and we can instantly detect it and we can also give you the diagnosis, the way does it happen? And we can also give you the suggestion and the, what kind of adjustment we should make so that at the end of the operation and we can have on spec products. So the real time MMDA can help us, you know, in the money process uh, uh, manufacturing and can provide us the real time monitoring and the real time prediction and the forecasting and the real time control. So if we have such kind of tools and I think I, we can benefit and from this method. Okay, so this is the third one. I'm going to focus on, you know, this third methodologies in the later case study, but I now I also would like to mention this type of uh, uh, data analytics tools. And uh, if for the industry who, you know, have um, many manufacturing lines at a different location, if the people, high level, C level people, they want to see the performance of their production and on top of the real time multivariate uh, analysis platform, and we provide, you know, something like a active dashboard. And so that we can see and how the production uh, performs, and we can also have the instant or transparent information about this. And this can also bring the value, particularly for, you know, multinational company in the biopharma industry over there. And this is something in the real world, something like, you know, we are sitting in the control tower and we have the dashboard if we want to find any information, of course, and we can see it from the dashboard. And we can also drill down, we can populate and in the interactive way, and we can get the detailed information about, you know, specific production line here. Yeah, so this is the, uh, the add-on of the real-time MBDA. All right, so, I've given you uh, some brief introduction of uh, data analytics, and now we come to their applications. So here we can see uh, this type of data, these three types of data anal analytics can be applied, you know, in the different uh, activities, either in the process development or commercial manufacturing. Yeah, that's really depends on 
which area you are working on. And uh, of course, you can take the different tools or different methodologies. It can bring the value over here. Yeah, all right. So I'm going to present you uh, some case studies in the process development. And here I will show you these six examples. So from the box, you can see this could be, you know, the example related to the cell line development and how to optimize the process performance and the cell culture development and the filtration development. If you are working in the downstream process development or chromatography development, or you are working in, you know, the media development, or you are working in the analytical development. For example, if you are working in the PAT area and using uh, spectroscopy uh, analyzers. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at the first one. The background of this is, uh, you know, the, the cell line development. And, uh, and we know the HEC293T is the commonly used cell and for you know the process development and here and we are going to develop the, the uh, we are going to develop the process such that we can have a specific uh, uh, wearable uh, a cell count or vcd or vcc and also we want to maximize the wearability of the cell and at the same time, we also want to minimize the generation time and how we set the process conditions over here. And the process condition could be related to, you know, uh, RPM, the stirring speed, or the pH, or the DO, the dissolved oxygen, and how should we set the combination of these process factors such that I can reach the specific the cell density and maximize uh, the wearability of the cell and at the same time uh, minimize the generation time. And using the DOE, it can be easily uh, implemented over here. And this is, uh, you can see the reference and if you want to know details, and you can look at the reference. So this is the example, the data analysis used in the cell line development. And uh, this is from the cell culture development over here, and the partic particularly, and we are uh, talking about the, the skill down models over here. And the, this challenge is most of, you know faced in the MSAT people. If they are large scale bioreactor and if they want to improve the performance, and of course they they couldn't do the experiment in a large scale. So and usually they can e improve this and explore this in a smaller scale. But the first thing is probably you need to conformity study to make sure the different scale performance bio, bio reactor performance they are the similar and of course we have you know different type of uh, scaling up scaling down criteria but they are mainly the univariate but if we consider the performance and considering all the process parameters and using univariate uh, evaluation method is definitely is not enough. So here, the multivariate data analytics that can help, uh, can help us a lot. And we can make the comparison between the different scale and to see if they are similar and if it is not similar and what could be uh, the reason, the critical process parameters that resource their dissimilarity. Okay, and also we can develop or optimize our process in the small scale using the DOE method, and then we can transfer to the large scale. 
And this is an example from the uh, downstream, the filtration using dial filtration or ultra field filtration here. And in, in this case, and the most important thing is we want to decide the permeate flux. And we want to control the at the specific levels such that and we can have, you know, on spec the purity or on spec the recovery rates over there. But we, and how we decide the right permeate flux. And here probably we need to consider the feed flux. We also need to consider the key parameters like uh, TMP, trans transmembranes pressure, so on and so forth. And here the DOE can help us a lot. And we can, you know, divide the process condition at, at the right set point. And also that set point is insensitive to the uh, process variation such that, and we can guarantee we can have the uh, uh, red product. Uh, this is uh, application in another downstream process and using eye exchange chromatography here. And in this process, probably we are more interested in, you know, uh, to to have the high recovery rates and at the same time minimize, uh, you know, the con contamination like uh, uh, dimers and the hot cell proteins. And of course, we need to give the right sighting of the uh, loading conditions, like the loading mass or conductivity and the pH. And if we develop such kind of the process, the DOE can help us a lot. Uh, this example is in the media development area, because uh, you know, uh, if the cell line is uh, selected and we need to consider the most suitable media, and this is not a trivial task. It takes time, but uh, using the you know the, the DOE that data an analysis method, uh, we can uh, speed this process, and we can give the formulation of the different media, and such that we can give the different media recipe uh, to satisfy our need, such as maximize the tighter or minimize doubling time or reach a certain uh, wearability and so on and so forth. And this is, uh, you know, the media development and here without the DOE, it may take a very long time and uh, very costly, actually. Oops. And uh, this is the last uh, case study. Uh, this is uh, data identities application in uh, the raw mass factor calibration model over there. So this is related to the people working in analytical area. So without the MVDA multivariate data analysis, it's impossible to correlate, you know, the 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 data from from the raw and to the analyze over here because in the biopharma industry and we uh, particularly you know uh, need to know the real time uh, values in the bioreactors such as glucose or lactate and with this real time information and we can have the real time control over there but uh, to correlate the spectral data and the into the analyze like uh, glucose and we need the multivariate methodologies over there. Okay, so I think this is the end of uh, application case in development area and now I will show you some example in manufacturing area over here. And this is the example I'm going to show you. You can see the bioreactor. 
uh, up, down, up, this is from upstream and uh, some example from the downstream as well, and also the fill and the finish over here. All right. So in the manufacturing, and we need to monitor the process evolution in the real time. And the traditional way, usually we use uh, the univariate. We just measure temperature or, or flow or pH, and we do not have the overview. And sometimes, even though the individual process permit within the limits, by the end of the operation, we may not have on spec of the product. Because this is the you know, disadvantage of using the univariate monitor method and using multivariate approach. And we can easily and detect the excursion if there is something wrong in the bioreactor node. And of course, the real-time monitoring can also be applied to the downstream case. And here, this is uh, filtration, uh, uh, ultra dial filtration. And over there, of course, uh, we have different phases and we have many different process parameters. And using multivariate, we can summarize all these individual process parameters and we can not only know the individual, but most importantly, we know their correlation structure. Uh, this is a case study in the chromatography in here. And uh, if you are working in this area, probably you, you need to, you know, compare uh, some UVs or conductivities for each cycle. And uh, this is a tedious task. And uh, particularly in the real time, and uh, you may usually is uh, very uh, challenging over here. And see this customer, and they just download the data and uh, print it out in the paper, and then compare with, you know, uh, the reference badge. And this uh, take a lot of time and uh, resources over there. But if we have the real time mechanism, mechanism or platform, it uh, will save us a lot of uh, time and cost over here. And this is example for uh, the media. And of course, in our cell culture, the final quality is also related to the the media because the media is may come from the different suppliers and their composition is varying and how we track and trace the variation for the quality control over there and this is also a big challenge and using multivariate that's pretty easy and we can collect all the data and we can have an overview and such that when we can make a uh, comparison very easy over here. And this is example from, uh, you know, the fill and the finish, the last step. And also here, we may consider, you know, the batch genealogy and uh, we can trace back the raw materials and over here. It's very brief, but here I just try to cover data an analytics application in, in the different area. Okay, so I think this is uh, what mainly I presented. And uh, I have some uh, poor question and such that you understand the, yeah, and what's the takeaway message from my presentation. And I would like to ask Christina to show this. Uh, yes, can you see the poll questions on your screen? I can, let me see. 
At the moment, I couldn't see, but I'm not sure the participants can see that. Yes, we've got people answering. Okay, that would be good. Yeah. Yeah. So there are three questions, right, David? Yes, there are three questions. And then there are also the takeaway message because today we just present you the data analytics and there are many kinds of data analytics, but uh, here we highlight three and they are, you know, something de facto standard in the biopharma industry and uh, suggested by the regulators. Yeah. So hopefully if a few more people could answer, then we will share the results. Yeah. Just over half have answered so far. And if anyone has any questions, please do post it on the chat or in a few moments, please do unmute yourself and ask the questions directly. This session is going to be has been recorded and it will be on our YouTube channel if you miss the beginning uh, or if you want to rewatch. Okay, so uh, sharing the results now. Can everyone see, David? Yes, I can see the DOE, the first one, the DOE is used for, correct, the right answer is, is planning experiment and analyzing the results. 78 percentage got the right answer. Yeah. And it's not used for the large historical data. DOE usually generate a new data and using the minimum number of run of experiment and to generate maximum information and such that and we can find their causality the relationship. So the eight is a correct. Majority of people answer correctly. Okay, so the second one, MVDA is mainly used for. We have A, B, and C, D. A is a summarized process information and the make it visible at one glance, correct? And B is estimate and forecast the process outcome because we can build a model relating the process conditions and the, to the quality and the B is also correct. And the C is can be used for faulty detection and the root cause analysis, which is also right because the using multivariate it can, can help us easily to get to make a comparison and to do the further convection and the root cause analysis. So the right answer could be the last one or above. So majority of the people answer correctly. And this, this poll question is a little bit tricky because they are multi choice over there, but in the end, all are correct. Great, number three, real-time MVDA is mainly used for except if we look at A is used for overall process monitoring for fault detection and the diagnosis all the in the real time, yeah, which is correct. And the 33 people answer correctly. And then B is predicting and forecasting the quality attributes, which is also right in the real time. And the C is controlling process with otherwise information, which is also right. So the, this even tricky, this question even tricky is the real time MVDA is mainly used for except. So the last option is the right answer. It's usually not for the process development. Yeah, because the process development, you know, it's in the early stage and we want to derive the design space, you know, optimization, give the good set point and develop our recipe. But the real time is the recipe is already there and we are going to manufacturing in a large scale. And now the focus, we are going to monitor and controlling the 
the process over there. So the right answer is D. And around 50% answered correctly. Great. Thank you very much. Let me share my uh, again. And we have some summary here. Okay, so let's move to the, now you can see my screen, but unfortunately I couldn't move to leave my slides. I don't know why, let me just uh, stop sharing and uh, resharing it. Uh, let me resharing it. See if, oh, oops, I don't know uh, what happened with my, let me see this. Okay, so let's just swap condition. Sorry about that. Share. Okay, let's go to the summary of this. Okay, so back to the challenges in the biopharma. And this is the three important challenges we are facing, no matter what we are doing. And of course, we want to do it faster. We want to do it efficiently. And at the same time, we want to guarantee the quality over there. So how the data analytics can help us in facing these challenges. So here we present you three methodologies, three methods in data analytics, DOE and MADA and real time. And we can also see they have uh, a lot of uh, applications and, and, and this, type of methodology is also suggested by the regulators. And no matter what you are doing in the biopharma industry, and you can see they must be one to or combination of them and can help us to deliver our work and bring the value to, to us. So this is my last slide and I'm from Sotorius and here I just want to uh, let you know, and uh, our core value of Satori data analytics is to help our customer to reduce the time to market and save the cost and guarantee the quality over there. And we have been serving our customer for 30 plus years and over here. Yeah, so with that, I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, we have a few minutes. If anyone would like to ask a question, this is your golden opportunity. Or if you have any um, comment. You can also post it on the chat function if you don't want to unmute. Looks like uh, everyone is uh, all ready for the evening, I think, David. Yeah, um, it could be exhausted at this evening. point. But um, yes, yeah, so um, we're getting some thanks from Parasha. Thank you very much. Um, so I think that um, if there are no questions, uh, we will let you um, go. Uh, we have questions for the audience. If you could please help us to share your feedback. Um, for this session and to give us suggestions for other future Technical Tuesdays, please do just click on the link that you see in the chat box and you can just, um, if you can help us to fill that out, that would be wonderful. Um, but in the meantime, does anyone have a question? If not, we're going to let everyone uh, go for the evening or afternoon or morning, wherever you're, you are. Um, and I would like to thank David for your time and for sharing your experience with us. Um, and um, we very much appreciate that 
that um, you've joined us. And also to everyone else, thank you for joining this session. And, and we will be having quite a few Technical Tuesday sessions coming up in the month of October. And we look forward to seeing you then. So without further ado, I'd like to thank everyone and wish you all a lovely evening. Thank you, David. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, thank you very much, Take Linda. Thank you for having me. Thank you, thank everybody. You. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.